In this section, we're going to have a look at the effect of interest rate changes on international trade using the transmission mechanism again. First of all, let's have a look at some key terms. I've put up some key terms on the screen. If you pause the video and try and define each of these or explain these key terms and come back to the video in a moment when you've done that. So the exchange rate, it's the price of a currency in terms of another. That's the simplest and quickest way to define an exchange rate. A foreign exchange market is a market in which currencies are traded. So the foreign exchange market is open 24 seven. That's why when you're watching the news and they're talking about currencies, you see the currency prices flickering up and down, up and down in the background because they're always changing and people all around the world are changing money. Hot money is short term capital and this flows around the world in search of the highest return. This is a huge sum of money. It's bigger than the GDP of many small countries. And it's a load of money that's swilling around, swilling around by being moved by traders uh, at the flick of a switch, trying to look for the very best interest rate, i.e. the highest return. Appreciation is an increase of the price of a currency against others, but it's only in a free floating exchange rate system. If you're looking at a fixed exchange rate system, that would then be called revaluation. So it's important to distinguish the difference. And depreciation is a decrease in the price of currency against others in a free floating exchange rate system. Under a fixed exchange rate system, that would be called a devaluation. They're very different. So make sure you know your difference between appreciation and revaluation, depreciation and devaluation. OK, let's have a look on a diagram. So this is one of the occasions where you will use a micro diagram in a macro paper or in a macro question. So we've got the price or value of a currency on the y axis. So one pound is equal to dollars and the quantity of currency on the x axis. We are initially in equilibrium at exchange rate E at quantity Q. The Bank of England raises domestic interest rates. So this attracts that hot money. It's swilling around and it goes, aha, the Bank of England's raised the interest rates. Let's head to the UK because we can get more interest there. Now, heading to the UK, they will, of course, have to change all these billions and billions of dollars or whatever it is into sterling. So the demand for sterling will rise on the Forex, on the foreign exchange market. So we see a shift to the right of demand and that increases the exchange rate and increases the quantity of sterling. So let's have a look at interest rates in international trade. So we've got interest rates rising. That will attract inward hot money flows. Demand for the currency rises on Forex, as we've just seen on the diagram. The value of the currency rises or appreciates. Now, this means exports become relatively more expensive than they were beforehand. However, imports become relatively cheaper. So this means that the demand for UK exports will fall. So foreigners will buy less exports fewer exports and the demand for imports rises. So the value of net trade X minus M in your aggregate demand formula will fall. Aggregate demand falls or shifts to the left and inflationary pressure falls. Now is a little analysis and diagram task. So what we would like you to do, first of all, is to explain the impact of falling UK interest rates on the value of the pound. So as a little hint, think about what we've just done and see if you can reverse that to see what happens when interest rates fall. Then we want you to, sh to show on an aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram, the impact of this change on UK GDP, employment and the price level. So pause the video, have a go at this task, and I'll join you in a moment. 
Right, so hopefully you've had a go at this. You've uh, reversed our original analysis and you're now considering a fall of UK interest rates. And you've got a demand and supply diagram, aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram. So let's explain the impact of falling UK interest rates on the value of the pound. So the interest rates fall, hot money swirls out of the UK. So the supply of sterling on Forex rises because those investors are trying to get rid of pound sterling and swap it into another currency where the interest rates are higher. So the value of the currency depreciates, exports become cheaper, imports become more expensive, demand for our exports from abroad will rise but we will not demand so much from abroad because it's now expensive. So the value of net trade rises, which means that aggregate demand increases. Therefore, GDP will rise, employment will rise, and inflationary pressure will rise. Using an aggregate demand, aggregate supply curve to illustrate this impact on, the, on UK GDP, employment and the price level. So here we have an ADAS, note on the y-axis price level, on the x-axis real GDP. What we're interested in seeing is a shift to the right of aggregate demand. And we can see the rise in inflationary pressure between P1 and P2 but an increase in real output, Y1 to Y2, so more goods and services are being produced, and a rise in employment because more people are required to produce the greater volume of goods and services. We can also see that at the original position at Y1, the distance between Y1 and YFE would have been the negative output gap, so the difference between actual output and the economy's productive potential. We can see that after interest rates have fallen, that the distance between Y2 and YFE is much smaller. So the negative output gap has got a lot smaller. Now we're gonna have a look at some real world data. So in the top graph is the graph you've seen before of the bank base rate of interest for the UK. We can see the effect of the financial crisis in 2008 and then the subsequent very low interest rates since then. In the bottom graph is the dollar sterling exchange rate, the monthly average. So we're going to ask you to think about how closely related is the UK's bank rate with the exchange rate against the dollar. And can you explain that relationship? So if you pause the video again and join me in a moment when you've had a think about the correlation between those two bits of data. OK, so we can see that there is a clear link in late 2008, 2009, when bank rate fell by 90%. The exchange rate fluctuates much more than the bank rate, and that's to be expected because it's not just the bank rate that influences the exchange rate. The, influ the exchange rate is influenced by other factors such as speculation, demand for exports and imports, inward foreign direct investment, government policy, the uh, stage of the economic cycle, all sorts of other things will affect the exchange rate, making its fluctuations much more frequent. And also there are many exchange rates for a currency. For example, we could be considering the sterling against the euro, the yen, the renminbi, all sorts of other currencies that we trade with. So dollar is not the only exchange rate. 